Hi, everybody. Dee Reinhart with Illinois WorkNet, along with Olivia Miller, producing this lovely new platform called Zoom. <laughs> and it's a learning curve for both Olivia and I. So we may or may not get everything here. So your patience is greatly appreciated. Uh, we're trying to uh, try something new and different here to save a couple of, doc uh, a couple of bucks. Um, okay, now uh, let's just dive right in. We've got some numbers, and these numbers look really big to me for this being the 10th of the month. So if you guys have some things in here that you haven't done, or if there's something wrong, you need to let us know. But Albany Park, you've got some big numbers. Uh, there's Asian Human Services has some six. I'm not going to go through all of these. Safe Haven, you've still got 16, 21, 51s that need to be entered. Uh, we've got 15 enrollments required from Lessie Bates. North Lawndale, you've got a whole bunch of things that say application not started. If people um, did not attend those intake orientations, you need to upload a 2151 that says that they weren't there. So we need to uh, make sure that you've got that stuff going on. We were in pretty good shape with the no progress and situation worse. There's a number of things that need to have uh, completion status added and that uh, items that the DHS staff has marked as ineligible. So please make sure that you go in and do that. I am back on board again, um, and we need to make sure that everybody's numbers are working properly. So that's it for the numbers. We'll get these out in the notes. And so now we need to get Tammy unmuted, but I don't see. She oh, should hear me? unmuted, yeah. Okay. Good there afternoon, are. everybody. So excited to have Dee back on board with us. Um, so as you guys know, we are in the final stretch coming up with the EPIC program. The, uh, all the modifications have been completed and executed. Yay, I'm excited about that. Um, so you're able to draw cash and uh, we put all your costs in. Um, but what we need to do is we really need to turn it up and finish this program strong. So. Um, with those modifications, you guys provided some new performance indicators as far as the number enrolled, um, completing training, employed, and retained. So our, our goal is to hit those targets. Um, with that said, you know, we are looking at programs that are going to be closing because if you have long-term programs, we're not going to be able to put them in and be able to do completion with these customers. So we do have a list, and I'm not sure if we can pull that up, either Dee or Olivia. It's the, uh, I'm working on it. Okay. It's the list of what we have as far as programs um, that are still open. If you do have a program that's a longer term program, and I think this is sorted by um, close date. So like Matricon has several programs that are 32 weeks, but they're planning on co-enrolling in, in WIOA services. So we're leaving open any programs that you're, you have an exit plan for these customers. So if you have a uh, plan to co-enroll these individuals in another program after Epic is done, those will not shut. Uh, but we're starting to shut other programs, you know, based upon, you know, the term and how long they're going to they're gonna last. Now, um, DHS had originally planned on looking at stopping the referral process at the end of October. Uh, we've had communication with them, and we're going to go through the end of November um, for referral processes. But what, what, one of the things I really want you guys to focus on is, is identifying these customers and doing the reverse referral, sending customers to DHS to get in these programs because we really want you guys to meet your numbers. So I want you to focus on that outreach and recruiting customers and then getting them over to DHS to determine eligibility um, and getting them in the programs. Um, but you know, as these going through this list, you can see the programs you know, that are still um, left open. And as we're moving through, we're gonna be closing these um, because it, you're, just, you're just not gonna have enough time to get them through the training and try and get them placed in employment before the end of February. Um, so if there's any questions on that, um, the big push thing is we need to really step up our game and make sure that we're, you know, getting customers in and recruiting customers and getting them placed in the training program so that we can meet our, our, our benchmarks that are in the scope of work. So it looks like there's 
21 programs that are closing as of Friday. So if there's any of these that um, are less than 16 weeks, please get in touch with Tammy or me or Olivia to tweet so that we don't close that particular program out. Otherwise, if that's your only program, you won't be receiving any referrals. And Dee, can you push it over some so they can see who the program is with? I can't see who the program is with. Oh, sorry. All right. There we go. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, and, or if there's something that you're looking on this list, and we'll share this list with the, the notes. If there's something on this list that should be there, that you have a program that it's not, then communicate that with us, too. Um, because we want to make sure that we're keeping everything open that is accessible and, and um, they can complete, or we're keeping everything open that you've got an exit plan with them and you're going to put them in another funding source. And especially if you've got any short-term, we talked about short-term ones back in July. If you've got something that's a couple of weeks long and you can, we can still get people in, we're going to, we're going to talk to DHS and see if they might extend it a little bit longer if we've got really short-term programs available and if we still have money available right Tammy correct well, the money yeah there'll be money available so we're not too terribly concerned about that but like I said we just want to make sure that you know we're able to do the appropriate services for services for these customers and that employment is the end goal don't worry about retention we can we can get the retention and during the closeout period so I'm not worried about retention we're just worried about um, the training and placement before the end of February yes um, Kendrea asked if your program is on here you will be closing them on Friday so only if it says the 10 12 date uh, Kendrea so let's see Catholic Charities doesn't have anything listed for 12 for 10 12 um, looking at yours Kendrea they're scheduled for 11 2 unless you've got something shorter that we need to add to the list and if you're uh, looking looking at the this, one here for 1221 okay. and then looking at this for the weeks if if you're looking at this and you're like no that's really not a 16 week program it's a 10 week program then let us know because we need to address that so will this this has been out to you guys several different times uh, we will try to include it in the documents on the webinar I'm pretty okay. sure it's already in the restricted resources page. I'm going to double check okay. now. Okay. Um, contact, send an email to Olivia, Tammy, and myself so that we all know what's going on. If you need to change a date or update something that you see on here. It is on the um, restricted resources page under the CBO resources. It has the word new in front of it, and it's the bottom bullet in the first section in case anybody needs to find it. And we can, pro we can probably include that link in the notes, too. Mm -hmm. That would be great, yes. And then, um, Olivia, will that be updated then as we continue to close programs? Is that yes. the plan with that? Okay. Okay, so we talked about referrals from DHS through the end of November. We talked about the programs. We've talked about the numbers. Uh, Tammy, are you done talking about the modifications? I am. I'm just excited that we have them all done finally. So, like I said, everybody should, you know, be able to report the costs and, re and request the cash. Um, I would like to see that that's all brought up to date, especially on your cost side. Um, you know, you have until the 20th of, of this month to report your costs. And you can report costs from prior quarters. Obviously, you know, there's, there's costs that you guys have incurred that you weren't able to report. So I report all of that this month um, in that one, you know, big lump sum. Um, and then just include your trial balance to when we do our uh, project status or periodical financial reports and periodical performance reports. Be sure to include your trial balance that will reflect all of the costs in the GRS. 
So um, those again are going to be due the end of this month, and so we want to you know make sure that all of your costs are reported, and then your trial balance supports what's um, what's in the GRS. So that when we when we send it to our fiscal people, it's really clear. Otherwise, you have to provide a crosswalk. Any questions right. on any of that? I don't see my chat. And we are, um, we had a couple um, times we had to cancel this webinar partly because Dee wasn't available and there's other conflicting things that were going on within our department. Um, but we're back on schedule and Olivia did send everybody the new Zoom link. And once again, we're learning this, so you have to be patient with us. But that's what's going to be used from now on. So um, if you haven't done it, make sure you download that and put that into your Outlook calendar so you have that information available for you. Okay. Um, the other thing that you guys need to be looking at is I'm going to start, uh, we're going to put a plan together for what we need to do moving forward to make sure that everybody's got the right stuff in the system. So if you guys want to take a look at your benchmark report, your I-STEP report, and let me make this a little bit bigger here. And I'm not going to go into these reports right now, but come to the reports tab, the bar graph looking thing, and look at your benchmark report, look at your I-STEP report to see if there's steps missing from people. And I'll just go into this I-STEP report real quick. Well, as quick as the system will let me. But the I-STEP report, if you aren't getting steps done, we can't verify a lot of things for your, your dollars. And Tammy looks at the benchmark report along with the I-STEP report, along with what else do you look at to determine if somebody has actually accomplished what they said they were going to? Well, as far as the measures, and, and you guys will probably notice this in your scope of work, we, we, we've added more flexibility to some degree on your part because this has been a really hard program to do a performance-based contract with. So um, one of the things that we added um, in this last modification um, and, and with DHS and FNS and everybody's approval was 25% um, of the total grant would, would be not subject to performance. So that's the implementation. Um, and then we still kept the, the same um, uh, matrix as far as percent. So 30% is attributed to um, assessing 20%, um, I think enrolled 20%. I don't have them in front of me, but the, the breakout and it's in your scope of work. Um, so, but what we're, what we're looking at is, is you're enrolled in training, assessed is, is um, 30%. So you get, you know, a certain amount for everybody you assess because with assessments comes staffing, comes um, a lot of those other things. They may not ever get enrolled in training, but you still have to staff them. You still have to do a lot of um, extra, you know, work with them and try and get them into training. Um, so we wanted to have you guys to have the ability to be paid for that. Um, but um, enrolled in training, completing training, employed and retained are the four major ones. And those are the ones that we really want to see you guys working on from here on out, especially the employment retention measures, um, because this is this is what we're going to be, you know, judged on, um, you know, when it's, once it's all said and done, and this is what the evaluation team is going to look at. And they're going to I, try and identify if this program you know, made sense. You know, what's the return on investment? Did did the what we did do in this program actually make a difference to customers? And is this something that we have takeaways that need to be implemented in the larger scope of um, um, SNAP E and T? Um, so we want to, like I said, finish out strong with that. So the benchmark report is definitely one to look at. And so you need to pull your numbers and make sure everybody's counted in that. And if they're not, you can reach out. Dee and Olivia are probably the better on this one. If if somebody's not counted in retention. And you know they should be there. Then you know, um, you know, get a hold of us and say this customer should be there. They're not. Why? And it's more than likely just something in the system that's not marked correctly. Um, the other thing, and we're going to be looking at is just the data as a whole. So we're going to start looking at your credentials and credential reports. And we, had, I know, months ago we had talked to you guys about going in and looking at your credentials and making sure your credential names were consistent, and the credential credentials that you're putting in there were from an you know an authorized um, source. So we're going to start doing going back and revisiting that again. So make sure that your credentials that you're entering in there are in there, 
um, that you're, you know, you're putting the documentation, supporting documentation in there and uploading that um, because that's going to be a huge element too is what credentials were received by these customers. Um, and, and that's going to be a significant piece that we're looking at. And I know in the new cohort, when I pulled a report there, and I'm not saying everybody should have credentials now because we just started that in May, but I didn't see a whole lot of credentials entered. There was one agency that had a lot of credentials entered for the customers, but I didn't see a whole lot from any other agencies. So just make sure that you're documenting everything that needs to be documented in the system. And that's part of what um, Dee's going to be working with us too you know, for, for the rest of this um, project is, you know, verifying data, validating data, because that's in the, ultimately what's going to tell our story. So if you look, I finally got the ISTEP report to come up, and part of what Tammy was just talking about was the credentials. And these steps right here are what's, what counts for your training. And that's, so we've got uh, 461 people that completed an EPIC training program in an industry recognized certificate only. We've got uh, 34 that completed EPIC training with a college credit, and then five people completed work experience. So those pieces, along with getting their GED or raising their math and reading scores, some of those pieces all count to that training, and then getting the job and retaining the job. So if we have, for, for example, up here, we've only got two people in here that have a credential earned for the job retention, and we have 100, uh, I'm sorry, 450 people that have the step completed, which means that they completed their 90 days. There's only 450 people out of 2,500 that retained for 90 days. Somehow I don't believe that. I think it should be higher than that. Um, I do know that we had some drops from a lot of the people, but I, I just can't believe that there's only 450 that were retained for 90 days. So that means that there's some steps missing, which means that your benchmarks will be off. So as you're looking at these pieces, please make sure that all of those steps are completed for everybody. All right. Any questions that you need to type into the chat? I know I talked to a few of you while I was on hiatus, but uh, it's good to be back. And I hope that everybody uh, works works with us all to get all of this really successfully completed here. And one other thing, Dee, I, um, I want to um, request. Wait, there's from a question. All... There's a oh, question I, before. Will the steps be counted even if DHS changes their enrollment status? Are you, Kelsey, are you saying they're making them ineligible because of income? The steps are supposed to still count because the I step is separate from the uh, pro progress page. And, uh, yeah, and that's and as D said, oh, the, the I step is separate. The I step is separate, separate from what DHS does for eligibility. So anything that you accomplish and complete with this customer is kept in the I step um, and documented there, and that's where the benchmark report happens. So I mean, ultimately, uh, in the perfect world, everybody would become ineligible at some point because you're going to get them all employed, and their income would be sustaining income and knock them off the SNAP benefits but you still get credit for all the work that you've done. So, I mean, that's, that's what we really want for this project is that we end up, you know, um, making the big majority of our population we're serving with ineligible for SNAP because we've moved them to a better, you know, living circumstance through employment. Yeah, that's true. They lose their job and they come back on, so yeah. But the steps are supposed to be independent of the eligibility process. Um, Tammy, there was a deadline that you mentioned for 1020. What was that 
that needed to be submitted? That is your cost in the GRS. So all of the costs, um, you only have five line items in the GRS. So those costs need to be documented um, through the end of September um, by October 20th. And then when you do your reporting at the end of this month, your financial um, periodical financial report will be supported by a trial balance that also reflects what's reported in the GRS for the line items. Okay, Carmen brought up a point. Those who have been moved to other programs will not show up though, so this will probably be an issue. And Tammy is tracking those manually. So yeah, I do realize that's an through, issue. If they got through assessment with you and enrollment with you and maybe completed training but moved on because they didn't blah, 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 blah whatever, uh, Tammy's tracking those manually because we can still see uh, who's where. That information is not lost in the system. So that's still, we can still see what you did for those specific customers. It's just they don't necessarily show up in the benchmark report. And that's something that we have to add to those numbers when we're, we're doing the calculations. Okay. So one of the other things um, I want to make sure that you guys are doing um, in the partner resource page, we have our CBO contacts. Um, I, there has been some changes I know um, with some of the, our um, people in the field. And so I would really like for you guys to take a look at that. And if there's any changes in your staff that's working with Epic, we need to know what those changes are. And if you could send that to, to D. Um, we need to just know who they are and what their contact information is so that we're reaching out <laughs> to the appropriate people too. Because I know we have, you know, a few people have left the program, so we want to make sure that we're communicating to the appropriate people. And Olivia, did you want to uh, talk about the update? Yeah, so um, we pushed out an update recently. We made some modifications to the way enrollment um, works. Um, we had push out updates in the future. Um, we just updated those a little bit more. So if you enroll a customer, if you mark them as enrolled and select a training program to enroll them in, and then upload a 2151A for that customer with a um, progress level, it's going to lock down the enrollment field, and it will not let you unenroll a customer permanently. You can change their training programs. You just cannot mark them as not enrolled. Um, we did this because we continue to have CBOs who go in and unenroll customers after they completed. If that happens, the customer gets thrown up to the top of the dashboard because they do not have all the required fields entered in to be pulled down to the completion fields. Um, so we're doing this to prevent customer records from being um, removed and uncounted in the enrolled dashboard. Um, super admins do have the ability to unenroll customers. So if you act, are in maybe like the wrong customer and you enroll them and upload a 2151A and you realize, oh, I'm in with John and I meant to upload this for Bob, just send me or D um, or Tammy an email and we can go in and get them unenrolled and everything removed for you. But there shouldn't be any issues because once a customer is enrolled, um, you should never be going in and touching the enrollment after that. You guys have any questions on the enrollment update? Okay. All right, is, is that the end of our agenda, Olivia? Yes, we got data in Epic, right? Yes. There's one other topic that I wanna just bring up, and um, the, Deidre actually sent me an email right now, which sparked that. Since Dee has been gone, Dee was really, really good about um, watching um, appointment dates with you guys and making sure you had appointment dates. And we've had several incidents, incidences where DHS is trying to schedule somebody with one of the agencies and then there's no appointments available. So please, please make sure that you have appointments available for um, your customers. We actually just got one that Inspiration Corporation needs to add some appointments. They're not able to access or to refer a customer. So, you know, make sure that you're putting your appointment dates at least through the end of November and actually go ahead and throw them in for December. 
um, you know, so that way, if they're scheduling them in November, more than likely they, you may be receiving them in December also. Well, and Kelsey makes a good point if you still have programs in which to enroll customers. Correct. But your program, if you don't have any programs, then they won't even see you as an option. Notice inform that after October 9th, we cannot receive any more referrals. Who was that? An, you were informed by, is that an internal process? Who told you that to me. Yeah. Folks? Or did DHS say, say that or who? Also, just to kind of piggyback off what Kelsey said. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Domingo, after October back. 9th. No, I, to be, I don't think so. Well, wait a minute. When is your last, when is the last cohort that they can begin and still finish before, so that you can get them a job? Okay, so then after October 22nd, you can't put anybody in a program. So, then maybe after October 9th, you can't. Unless you can work with a WIOA office near you. And is the cohort eight weeks? Is that what I remember? Yeah, so you'd be the end of February. Unless you can co-enroll them with WIOA, I don't think we can get anybody else in, in the, into that November cohort. Check. Let's let's talk tomorrow. Right, and the the issue you run into is um, not being able to to get that employment benchmark by doing that. But if you guys want to, if you're okay with that. And you're not anticipating getting that that uh, employment benchmark with that customer, but you can complete the training. And that's something we need to discuss. What are 267Ts? Oh, um, and Olivia, this was a conversation we had with uh, with Deidre, I believe. And correct me if I'm wrong, Deidre. Um, the 267T is an appointment form that is provided to the customers for an appointment with DHS. So I think correct. there was some confusion um, on some providers that they were looking at some uh, case notes on appointments, and they were thinking that that was their appointment date when it was in actuality uh, an appointment for the customer to come to DHS. And we, so 267 and 1721, both mean the same thing. If you see those in the notes section of your um, reverse referral customers, that just means that DHS has reached out to the customer and they have an appointment to come in and meet with DHS to determine if they're eligible to continue participating with you guys. So, Olivia, and correct me if I'm wrong, they should be really looking at the bottom box where appointments have been scheduled for their their appointments and not not necessarily looking at the case notes. They need to look at the at, at the customers that have a, a scheduled appointment with them. Yeah, so um, to know which customers are scheduled with you, you will use the row in the dashboard that identifies um, scheduled appointments that are upcoming. However, um, for your for the new cohort customers that you guys are sending to DHS, they're not, even though you guys schedule an appointment for those customers before you send them to DHS, it's not gonna save and hold and schedule that appointment until after DHS has said, yes, they are eligible. And once DHS has said that, it'll hold that time slot for them. We don't wanna take up a bunch of your guys' time slots if the customer is not eligible and not gonna to come to the appointment anyways. If that appointment has been um, overwritten because either too many people got into it or you guys removed it, then DHS will be prompted that they have to reschedule a new appointment date because that date is no longer available. 
and then they'll give them that appointment date and they'll show in that enroll growth. But I've been getting a lot of um, emails and calls from different CBOs who have customers sitting waiting for eligibility, eligibility verification to be completed. You can go into those customers and click view next to your customer's name. And down in the bottom box is where DHS is putting in case notes and information on what they're doing in their process to get customers re-engaged. So that's where you're going to see the 267 um, and the 1721. And that just means, and that's a way to let us know, hey, this DHS staff member has reached out and is calling the customer back in. And after they get that customer to come back in, because they'll typically give us a date that they're going to be meeting with that customer, then DHS will come in and say, yes, they're eligible, or no, they're not eligible, and they'll show in your appointment field. So if you have any questions on what's going on with those customers, if they're moving along, if DHS is doing anything with them, um, you can always go and look at that bottom note section. And those are only for the customers who do not yet have accounts like all the other customers in Epic because they have not completed the eligibility review process. Do you guys have any questions on um, just getting those customers back to you guys after you send them to DHS? And these are the two rows that we were talking about where you'll see if you have appointments pending. Uh, I do remember having a challenge. I think it might have been way down south. Um, because the appointment still showed up because DHS had not approved the person and actually scheduled the appointment that the, the caseworker was still scheduling the first appointment that was available. So if you're only allowing one person per appointment, you need to keep track of when you're scheduling your people. If you've got a group appointment, track it to 10, and then move on to the next appointment. And I also do want to let you guys know while we're talking about this, um, we have had um, some confusion between the bottom um, buttons whenever you're um, sending a customer to DHS um, for them to complete the eligibility review process. If you click, click the button that just says save customer, it's just going to save the information. It will not send them to DHS. If you have not set an appointment for the customer, they have not been sent to DHS. One of the last steps you'll do in the re-engagement process is schedule the customer an appointment. Um, we did add in some warning messages. So now if you click to just save the customer, it'll give you a message that, let you, that lets you know you have not completed the reverse referral process. We've also had DHS go in and try to um, do eligibility review for customers that you guys have not yet submitted. Um, and so we added some warning messages to, for them to hold off until you guys submit. And while we're on this, one, one other thing that um, I've noticed some too, and this will be in our data validation, is if they miss their appointment, you need to go in and do the 2151, you know, indicating missed appointment because there's some that are sitting out there. I don't think a lot, but there are some that are sitting out there that the appointment has passed and there has not been an action taken on that customer. Oh, there's a lot. There's a so, lot of them okay. that were from September and yeah. some of from August. So this is an area that we're going to be, you know, going through and checking. But if if they've missed their appointment, you need to follow up on that right away. Isn't it 48 hours um, that you need to put that 2151 missed appointment? So then DHS knows that they have to take an action with that customer. And if you miss yeah. that um, 48 hours, then it's your responsibility to reschedule and get the customer back in because DHS can't do conciliation. Um, because it is policy that it they be notified in 48 hours, and if they're not, then it's your guys' responsibility. So just make sure that you're doing it in a timely manner, and it's going to save you extra work if you wait over that 48 hours. And there's a question from Laura. Are customers able to be placed back in Epic after being removed and placed in traditional JPP? 
that is going to be a discussion that you will have to have with the caseworker from the office where the customer is from. They technically they could, but it's going to be it's going to be a, a discussion because why did they leave in the first place, and why do they want to come back? So you have to work that out with the case manager. I'm not going to say no. And I'm not going to say yes. It's going to require a discussion. And are we done with pretty much everything on our agenda? Yes. All right. So um, we were informed about the passing of Margaret Haywood. And they are going to honor her. Uh, Inspiration Corporation is going to be honoring Margaret on November 3rd from 2 to 4 p.m. at Inspiration Kitchens on Lake Street in Chicago. And if you knew Margaret, you knew how nice she was and that this is a loss for their organization. And if you have the time and the ability to attend the memorial, we will include the information in the notes so that you can attend if you would like. And I have to apologize right now, D'Amico, I will not be able to attend. I have a huge family function that day. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, we have a cust question here. New cohort customers that are voluntary and don't follow through with training or school, does anything happen to them with DHS? I would complete and send for sanction, but does DHS have to update the case note or do something with the 2151? New cohort customers are voluntary unless they're in a mandatory area. So the same policies apply if you are in a mandatory area. And, you know, as, as she was stating, there's, there's no sanctions that they can do against a volunteer customer, but still follow the same process of, of submitting the 2151 and indicating a no-show. It's just that on the DHS side that there's there's no real repercussions they can take because they're in the volunteer, voluntary status. And Kelsey's saying that paid work experience payroll needs to be approved again, Tammy. Will do. Thank you. And, and Deidre did respond, customers will go back to the local office and be referred if a decision is made to realign the customer back with Epic. So, so um, Deidre confirmed what Dee said, is they need to go back to the, you need to talk with the local office and they'll make that determination. Okay. Um, I think that might be it. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I just want to say I'm thrilled to have Dee back. We're going to hit it, um, you know, hard and furious here for these last four or five months to make sure that, you know, we're accomplishing everything that we possibly can and then, you know, and verifying data and everything so that we're telling a really good, accurate um, report of what Epic did for the state of Illinois. And thanks to all of you guys for your hard, amazing work. We really, really appreciate it. Are staffing required through? Yes. You, you have to staff the people until you don't have any people left. All right. Well. <laughs> February. <laughs> That's when your grant ends. <laughs> End of February. You have to February 28th. All right. Okay, have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll get notes out as soon as we can. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.